After touring countries like Cuba and Mexico, I realized something. My Spanish needs some work. Hola. Hola, hola, buenos días. Tardes ya. Pero están ricas. Hey, I'm just reacting conversationally. I don't know what she's saying. So what is this? Tlacoyo. Tlacoyo. Well, now I've taken language learning into my own hands. Attending live immersion classes and having face-to-face -face conversations with qualified native speaking teachers. Hola. Hola, Sony. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Lingoda offers classes in English, Spanish, German, French, and Business English. You can choose from a monthly or a marathon plan. Select the monthly payment plan for access to one to ten classes a week with the freedom to cancel at any time. If you want to make consistent progress in learning a language, try the three to twelve month marathon course and commit to your language learning journey. ¿Dónde está? The best part? Both plans are flexible based on your schedule. Just click in the description for an up to 40% discount on your first month's payment. You can also do a 7-day free trial, choosing between 3 group classes or 1 private class for free within the 7 days. Now, on to the show. Right now I'm standing on the bodies of 1 million dead Kongs. But how did they get here? And who's here to tell their story? I am. Last time in the Bahamas, I got the full-on tourist experience. I think I fit right in. I love your hot. The same experience millions who visit this island get every year. Irresponsibly large chunks of lobster. Oh my. Now, I'm stepping off the resort and into the everyday lives of the Bahamian people. Please show me how to eat this raw. This is fascinating. Eating what the real locals eat, and you won't be disappointed. Oh, this looks like my dad's toenail. With 700 islands and mile after mile of coastline, the Bahamas has plenty of beachfront and some world-class fishing. Always caught by hand. No way. Today, I'm on a mission to catch, cook, and eat this country's national seafood. I'm just worried about having too much manpower. And it all starts here. The conch is famous, no, iconic here in the Bahamas. This is basically the country's national seafood. Today I'm going to find out all about it. As you can see, people really like it. Today we're starting by heading out there, where you can find the freshest conchs you'll see anywhere. Let's go. Conch. It's a common name for many species of sea snails found all around the world. Known for their swirly shells, they live in shallow warm waters on coral reefs and seagrass beds. So in order to catch one, you'll need to head to your nearest tropical ocean. Miko, put her there. Meet our intrepid snail hunter, Miko. He's been diving for conch for the last six years, so I think he knows what he's doing. Are the conch always caught by hand? Yeah, always caught by hand. They're like snail, they don't run away. They can't run, they slow. So as soon as you spot it, you know you can get it. If the water's not too deep. What is the deepest you can go to get a conch? Well, conchs be up to hundreds of feet, but the deepest I know guys go is like 80 feet. They dive like 80 feet of water wow. to get conch. Usually I would jump in the water and do the fun adventurous thing to Today, I think it's better like, what if you do everything and then I'll just narrate what you're doing? That's cool. That's cool? All right, from here, you're gonna jump in and I'm gonna narrate. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he had just jumped off and went for it. Oh, there he is, he's going down. It's like a whale sighting, it's very exciting. Conk is ubiquitous in the Bahamas. They're used for food, sold as souvenirs, or even used to announce that lunch is ready. This mollusk is a national icon that provides a livelihood for more than 9,000 local fishermen. He goes under for like 20 seconds at a time, which doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, he's got to kick, breathe, has to wear a mask to protect himself from COVID. Every year, hundreds of tons of these snails are plucked from the ocean. All right, there he is. Miku, do you have a conch? Yes! He's got like three of them. And he's looking for more. He's not satisfied. He's not even celebrating. It's no big deal for him. How far down is that? 10 feet. 10 feet? I could swim 10 feet. Do you have any emergency board shorts? No, <laughs> he looks at his own shorts. Should I grab those from you? Yeah. All right, one, two, oh. Oh yes, here we go. Right here you can see a little bit of it peeking out. But this looks great, look at this. Uh oh, it was pee, right? It was salty, I tasted it. I feel like that. He's just gone under. He got four before. He said there's more down there. Oh, yes! Got another one. That's huge! This one is the queen coat. We also call it the helmet. Look at this. This thing's a monster. Whoa! 
I, uh, oh, you caught it. I really fucked that up, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's so slippery. I almost dropped it again. Look at this thing. This is a beast. Oh, I'm gonna try to touch it. It is receded all the way back inside its shell, trying to get as far away from me as possible. You know, some of these conks, they can sell them for five, six bucks. This one, he says 30. Here we have the conch. This is like a medium-sized conch, right? Yeah. Oh, it peed. That's just water from the conch. Are you sure? Because I think when they get scared, they pee. That happens to me. Let's talk about this first. You call this a helmet? They call that a helmet queen because it's shaped like a helmet. The sea helmet is a type of giant mollusk. They can grow up to 15 inches in length. I actually tried this species when I was in Vietnam's Phuoc Island. This one's more like an abalone. But apparently, Bahamians don't eat it. In the Bahamas, we just sell this one as a souvenir. Probably because it's so darn hard to open. It's some kind of medieval torture device. All right, well, let's put the queen away. You're safe for now. And, and soon you'll be some rich guy's paperweight. What's the biggest conch we have here? This one and this one. Can we eat this raw? Yeah, we could eat it raw. So you just give it a little bit of a tap in just the right spot. You stick the knife in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. If only you could do that with the queen. And this one here is a male. You think that's a penis? Yeah. Wow, it makes me jealous. It's huge. All right, so he strips out the kind of the poop sack, and then there's a thick skin on the outside that you're kind of sloughing away. Now it's just like clean, delicious looking white meat. Scorch it up a little bit. You call it scorch? Yeah, we call it scorch, because mm. we just scorch. Ah. Then you could get your lime or your lemon, cut it, squeeze the lemon over it, and you've got it. All right. Mmm. Oh yeah, crispy, sweet. The meat's like kind of dense, almost like an abalone. Super fresh and it has some natural oceanic sweetness like crab meat. This might be better than abalone, it's really good. This is incredible. Right now, we just have to head back to shore and we're gonna bring these to the seafood market so you can make a little bit of cash. Most of the local fishermen's catch ends up here, Montague Beach Fish Market. Between these 25 stalls, you can buy anything that was freshly plucked from the ocean. Fish, Bahamian lobster, and the classic conch. Yellow, put her there. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice meeting you too. Meet Yellow, the owner of this all things conch stall. He got his start making conch salads at his house. I used to make him salad one or two a day. Keep going on and on like two and three. Over time, he made his way to this market. For the past 10 or 15 years, I was selling it to the locals, to the tourists. Now, he sells up to 100 conch salads a day. Is that someone calling for conch right now? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Morning. It's a big morning for yeah. Kong. I got the Kong salad ready by 9 o'clock. People are Pulling intense about Kong salad here. Coming. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Somebody okay. wants a Kong salad at 9. That's 14 minutes from now. I'll have it ready in time. Okay. Well, I already tried the raw Kong, but I'm told within each Kong, there's one power-giving ingredient. Folks, or let's be honest, dudes from all around the world seek out ways to boost their stamina. We call it a spilly or a piston. Can you show me now? You want a big one or a small one? You know I want a big one. In Vietnam, that may include ingesting a still beating cobra heart. That's a big heart. I think <laughs> I can take it down though. In Namibia, it could be freshly roasted goat testicles. It tastes like a burned marshmallow. Here, they've got something locals call Bahamian Viagra. <laughs> Easy. And this is the pistol. Let me get it out for you. Oh, he's pulling it out? This translucent tube is known locally as a conch piston. When we eat this, what happens next? It's Where? an aphrodisia. Once you chew it, in about six hours, you'll be ready to go. So it makes you compelled to involve yourself with intercourse with another person? Yes, sir. I've never tried that. Okay. Oh, it's a little salty. Salty. Gummy. Like eating a saltwater gummy bear. The worst kind of gummy bear. Just kind of melts in your mouth. Oh, man. What time is it? 3 p.m. today. I'm going to be ready to rock. Yes, sir. And you give me a call now. I should call you? Yes. I do have a wife. I mean, before the time is right. Just to let you know? Yes, sir. You keep a record or something? Yes. Yellow, thank you so much for this experience. Yes, sir. I'm gonna call you in six hours. Thank you. Thank you. And my wife uh, thanks you too. The most popular way to eat conch here is in a conch salad. Right now, I'm headed to one of this island's most renowned seafood slicers. 
This is Dino, owner of Dino's Conch Salad Stand. Right now, he's slicing up a traditional conch salad. All right, conch salad. Step one. He starts by skillfully removing the snail from its shell. I'll pull it out for you. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, yes, it's a beauty. All of that you see there, this is where the conch start. Wow, so the life begins right here. This little goopy stuff. They're gonna grow up on your lawn. Whoa! He cuts away its organs until only the meat remains. He skillfully rips off his outer skin like he's done it a thousand times before. Then that gets a lime juice rubbed down. If you don't clean this properly, you'll taste it behind your teeth. Now, the vegetables. The traditional kong salad has onions, tomatoes, bell peppers. Then, the kong. It's still like moving and kind of writhing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> a chili pepper blend. This is just hot finger peppers and habanero pepper blended with a little bit of lime juice. It's gonna be spicy. Depends on how spicy you like it. I like it as spicy as you like it. Right? All right, so you mix it all up. Oh, this is a gorgeous. A squeeze of lime and orange juice. Boom, done. Garnish. And finally, he tops it with red conch. And there it is, looking delicious, full of citrus. Let's go for it. Mmm. Oh, so perfect. Super citrusy. Yeah, because the lime can be kind of sharp, so we put the orange juice to kind of cut back on the sharpness of the lime. It's fresh, it's healthy, and it's different from anything you'll find anywhere else in the world. I'm gonna try this right here. This is the red. A lot of people say that's the sweetest part of the con. Mmm. To me, it tastes a little less sweet and more briny, but it's still good. What makes this place special is his tropical conch salad, a twist on the classic recipe. It starts with pineapple. Next, more fruit and vegetables. Onions, tomatoes, green pepper, mango, and don't forget the conch. A chili pepper blend and salt. All in a pineapple shell. The best part? Additional scorched conch. Sir, put her there. Thank you for joining me. This is Chef Leonardis, a young local chef who studied his craft in Europe. You're a chef. For you, what is Bahamian food? Bahamian food to me is just one big melting pot of so many different cultures. You take Creole, you take Greek, you take Chinese, and you just combine everything and you get one good flavor. And then how does conch fit into all of that? Conch is almost like our national animal, our national seafood, yeah. because at the end of the day, it's something that's harvested every year, throughout the year. Conch is like an aphrodisiac here. If I have a nice date night, if I know, I'm gonna get a conch salad before. Six hours before. Exactly. All right, well, let's talk about this right here. This is a conch fruit salad. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna scoop some of this up. Oh, pineapple, mango, it's sweet, it's spicy. It's a, a great combination. It has every element that you would want in a Kong salad without being so much that you can't take it. That's a good way to put it. And then there's this right here, scorched conch. Oh, he left the toenail on there and everything. That's what you use. So when you go like that. Mmm. The scorching it. I would call it scoring. Here they call it scorching. Scorch. What does that do? Pretty much allows all of the flavor to go inside it and get through every layer of the conch. So every time you bite, you get a flavor. The citrusy, it's hot. Exactly, it's a balance of everything. This is awesome. It's delicious. It has a seafood element. It has that kind of luxury element, but it's also healthy. So it's a guilt-free experience. But I want to see what else can be done with this ingredient. And I want to see a little bit more about Bahamian cooking. As a national staple, the conch is prepared in a variety of ways. There's scorched conch or the conch piston or more complex takes like conch salad or even the conch burger. Oh, that's good. But all this is nothing compared to what we'll try next. Shay, put her there. This is Shay, the head chef here at Captain's Table. This high-end establishment serves more conch classics loved across the island. Today, it's been all about conch and I want to ask you about a certain conch word. Uh, Conky Joe? I am what you would call a Conky Joe. What does that mean? I am a white Bahamian. You may be surprised to know that Bahamians can look like this, like this, or even like this. So you consider yourself a Bahamian chef, not just because you're Bahamian, but the food you're cooking. Are you focusing on Bahamian food? No matter what menu I do, there's always going to be conch on it. Probably 95% of menus here on any restaurant in this country, there's going to be conch on that menu. Well, right here we have the fritters. Conch fritters. It's essentially a Bahamian take on hush puppies. Shea starts with chopped onions and tomatoes. Followed by the conch cut into small pieces. Now, the celery. Season with a squeeze of fresh lime, thyme, salt, and pepper. Add a mixture of flour and baking soda. Combine and roll into little balls. Get dirty, get down low. 
I'm gonna try one without the sauce at first. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, it's so light. Nice hit of citrus to go with the heavy fried food. And there's a great aroma coming off of that. It reminds you of seafood. Well, that's nice. Should we try with the sauce? The sauce is called a calypso sauce. It's typically just a little bit of mayonnaise, ketchup, and some lime juice. Mmm. I love mayonnaise, but you can taste the ketchup and taste a little heat. That's good. Of all the conch dishes, which would you say is the most popular here? I would say the conch fritters, conch salad, and the cracked conch. Let's talk about cracked conch. With over 8 million American tourists annually, Bahamian food can't help but to be somewhat influenced by the American palate. Some say cracked conch is influenced by Southern American cooking. Conch is cleaned and cut into small strips. Then it gets tenderized, seasoned with salt, pepper, chopped thyme, and a squeeze of lime. Dip it in an egg wash mixture and roll it in flour. The 17th way we tried Kong today. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's delicious. The textures, the flavor, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's got some bite to it. But it's not tough. They beat it. They beat it off. That's what makes the magic happen, no? While well, I'm at the fish market this morning, I'm seeing a lot of just kind of standard seafood, just like whole fish and conch. I'm not seeing eel, shark, rays, anything like that. And all that stuff is here, but people here are choosing not to eat it. Why is that? In all honesty, there's not a market for it. When tourists come here, they only want to see our freshwater fish. That's what they come here for. We want to attract the tourists, so therefore we give what we can attract them with. Our final meal is being prepared by Chef Leonardis himself. He starts by beating his conch meat seasoned with blackened spices. So we'll just rest that lightly. And that's the sound you want to hear. Then you just want to sprinkle some more of that blackened seasoning in there. Then we want to take our conch out the pan. Then add julienne onions, sweet peppers, and let them caramelize. Cut the snail into small pieces and add it to the veggies. Now, the plating. I understand this food. It's high-end food. It's very complex. For me, it's easy to look at and understand what's going on. Right. For a lot of my audience, they have no idea what's right. going on. Please right. explain it to them and also me. I took the conch and paired it with some nice tropical salsa, sriracha aioli to the bottom with just a crisp apple twill. And the flowers, we eat those too? Of course, they're edible. Not the edibles that we're talking about. <laughs> Although it'd be nice if they were. All right, I'm gonna try this. The apple, what do you call it again? The coconut apple twill. Twill. Mmm, I love that. Crispy, sweet, and delicious. I'm gonna get a big fork full. Let's try it out. Oh, it's fantastic. A good mix of savory, sweet, fruity, beautiful, fruity salsa. The conch is delicious, it's tender. Flour, 100% tasted like a flour. <laughs> it tastes like pollen. Bees would love this food. I came here a few years ago with the Travel Channel to shoot a TV show, and I noticed behind the fish market where we were today, there's these colossal mountains of empty shells. It's like a giant conch graveyard. My first thought was, that can't last, especially if we're not just meeting the demand of the Bahamian people, but all the tourists that come here. I mean, there's roughly half a million Bahamians, but approximately 20 times that in tourists that come here every year. So what does a country do when there's this finite resource that they really depend on as part of their culinary identity? <laughs> prevent it from being an endangered. We have different rules as it relates to conch. You can only farm a certain size of conch that's been aged to a certain degree. Sometimes you'll have a net and out of a hundred of those conch, you might have one or two that's undersized. But sometimes it slips through the cracks and ends up to the person who's buying. That's where they should see that and return it. So as chefs, as farmers, as fishermen, as restaurants, we should all come together as one team to really show that we love our ecosystem just as much as we love tourists coming here to our country. When you look at your fellow countrymen and women, do you have hope? I have hope because you should always have hope. It only takes one spark to cause a whole chain reaction. So what's gonna happen? The right thing has to happen. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. When it already clean up and all, it's gonna be really pretty. You hear that, Shell? You're gonna be beautiful and dead. Your toenails look like that? I wish not. Getting close. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And do you have a name for your stall here? Yellow and Bobby stall. Oh, where's Bobby? Bobby's right here. Oh, hey, Bobby. <laughs> this is the re reproductive oh, part of the conch. That's the reproductive part. It's a male. Oh, should I eat that too? No, you cannot get it off. Oh, you can't get it. You cannot get it off. Wait, have you tried getting a conch off before? Uh, I mean, the, that part off? Yes, you'll have to cut it off. Okay, sorry. <laughs> 
Guys, that is the end of the video. A huge thank you to Miko, Yellow, Dino, Shay, and Chef Leonardis for joining me today. I learned so much, not just about conch, but about real Bahamian food that the folks here eat outside of the resorts. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. All right.